I'm, I'm not gonna be rolling no more, man. Uh, right now. Yeah, it's it's just it's way too hot. Yeah, I always try to see you ready to go. What date is that again? First of July, and we leave the we leave the day before the twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. First of July. And, uh, now, what do you mean by visa? I don't even know what that is. That's a visa to get your papers to go in there. Yeah. You just ask the council, Mexican council. Uh, just call them that, tell them you're going to go to Monterey for two or three days. Yeah. And they all tell you, we'll come down and uh, we'll give you a visa. And you have to have your birth certificate. Yeah. To prove you're American citizen. Right. And uh, so he don't want to have his dog uh, shot at nothing, so I'll take a rental dog from here, from my house, and get Down there. We just got one. I didn't, uh, I couldn't work this, uh, town dog. He wouldn't work. Yeah. Not messy. Yeah. And, uh, there wasn't no fire of it up and down, and I just called him back. Well, I'm going to have three, I think three matches is all on, uh, uh in August. The, yeah. The, the, yeah. the last of August, the 25th of August. It'll be a Saturday night or Sunday morning. Yeah. And, uh, I'll know for sure, you know, in about two days ahead of time, two or three days, ahead, I mean, two or three weeks ahead of time. Uh, it's going to be at night or in the morning. Why don't you make it in November and put you up a show? Well, uh, Morris, I really don't want to fool with the show. And, uh, I'm helping Jimmy get one together for the end of October. And then Ed's getting one, you know, at the end of September. And I thought I'd help him out some, try to get something together, and i just put on three little old matches here. In August, the end of August. I, I, I cleared from my ass pocket two grand. Is that right? I cleared from my ass pocket. Oh, that's good. I give everybody a hundred more. Yeah, that's good. That's a good deal. I give old Garm out a pretty nice little trophy. Yeah, damn sure did. <laughs> oh, Garm. <laughs> oh, he's a dandy, ain't he? Oh, God. Oh, he's a dandy. Uh, Thad. This dog is kind of falling to pieces on me and looks bad. Which and I go, the big red dog I got the Petronelli. And I go out there and I find him eating nothing but shit. He'll shit and within five minutes he'll eat it. That's a vice. Uh, that's what? That's a vice, a bad habit. Yeah, but will that make him uh, go to kind of looking bad? Yeah. yeah. That's what I figured. I'm going to have to put him up in a pen and keep it clean. Yeah. Now this is very much what I was talking about uh, as the match continues on and on and on. <laughs> See, we was talking about uh, the tombstone dog. And at this time, I knew uh, Maurice and, and Bobby Hall was close. Of course, Maurice was close with everybody that uh, I was matched into to the part of where you never knew where Maurice was at. Never knew exactly where he was at, where he had his money at. But at the same time, you can almost bet sure that when you tell him something like that and he's talking to whoever you're matched into, he's going to tell them about it. In other words, there's such a thing as sort of telling people things that you want, the, want them to tell someone else. <coughs> and that part that I was just telling Maurice, that had just about as much con, had as much con and bullshit in it as it could have. Tombstone was doing real good all the way through his key. I had him, I had him in a nice pen built up off the ground. And I was sure enough keeping him, uh, I had him cleaned out. I had him in the very best of health, being matched into Bobby Hall and Bully Son Jr. at the time when this conversation was going on. But I would be conning and lying and uh, matched into Maurice in a way of knowing that the word was going to be passed on. In other words, and it was going to, you know, 
get into the other camp. This was this was at a time when I was matching into all of the bully son uh, bred dogs. Uh, that was the level of outcrossing that was in their family at the time when they came along was that that it was uh, they was bred fairly close to the purest family through the true breeding of Eli. And Eli was bred close to the the purest family bred on Earl Tudor's yard. Uh, and uh, then Bully Son came from a very wild cross, a very outcross uh, breeding that was made with Eli to Floyd Boudreaux's Spook Bitch, which the, the breeding of Spook, which was Scrub and Blind Billy and those dogs, is like they're a bred of unknown bred dogs. Floyd Boudreau never knew the true breeding of those dogs that he that came in there by way of Bill uh, uh, J.T. Collier. Now they was pretty sure they was bred out of Collier's yard, but he never did was able to get the exact true breeding of, of the dog that uh, that Blind Billy dog. In later years, he put uh, Earl Tudor pedigree on him. Him and Greenwood did, but uh, at the time. They was never able to uh, uh, get the true breeding of that blind billy dog, and uh, that uh, all those dogs showed very different than the very pure families from Earl Tudor's yard. They was very different. Uh, I got a video number 17 that shows the dogs on J. T. Collier's yard in 1960, and they very much all of those dogs look very much the same as. The blind billy dog, the scrub dog, and the uh, spook bitch. All of those dogs look very much like those dogs that's on video number 17 that's on J.T. Collier's yard. And then also on that video number 17 are the dogs on Maurice Carver's yard in 1960. And also the dogs on my yard in 1960s. And uh, it, uh, these... Uh, these videos and audios are, like I say, they're very much a, a power of uh, being able to really see and understand some truth proving to the part of where uh, you can understand it when you have it explained. You can see pictures of those dogs like Blind Billy and Spook and uh, Scrub and those dogs that's bred of those that uh, basically around Boudreaux's Blind Billy dog. And you can see these dogs on J.T. Collier's yard, and you can just see the same family of dogs in them. And that's, that's, that's the way it is when you get to the part of being able to understand breeding and understand the way the different families are bred. You'll be able to understand each family had its own characteristics that it, uh, that it showed. And... Uh, and regardless of how the pedigrees showed that the different people put on them. But see, Bully Son, that family of dogs that was built around Bully Son and Eli Jr., which was Art, and uh, a number of different uh, dogs was bred around that, uh, that, that outcrossing of Tudor's very pure families from that crybaby bitch, which was Eli's Dane. And uh, then uh, the other dog that was real heavy uh, Tudor bred with a Covina cross in it. Those was real, that crybaby bitch was a very pure family bred bitch bred out of Earl Tudor's yard, Joe Covina's yard, of the very purest families. And it, uh, it was outcrossed to that uh, more outcross scatter bred stuff that J.T. Collier had that was bred down from the Feely dogs, but they had more outcrossing in them, where Tudor's families bred down from the Feely dogs, they were more pure family bred, but uh, Collier's dogs, you can study the records and the breeding of J.T. Collier's dogs, and you can see where his families was much more outcross bred than the families of Feely dogs that Earl Tudor had. Earl Tudor's Feely families was very pure family bred. J.T. Collier's was much more outcross bred, but they was basically bred from the same purest family of the Feely dogs from the generations before. 
this is pretty much the same way all the different families in the game become bred. And as you learn this and be able to understand this about breeding and learn how all the different families are kin to one another and how they've all been outcrossed bred from the purest family at their time when the outcrosses was first made. And then the most proven families in the game become bred back to the more pure stuff. The more pure stuff and the purest bred families have always throughout the history of the game, the purest bred families and the families bred from the purest bred families has always been the most proven families within the core. And this is true, but you've got to be able to get an understanding of breeding to be able to understand this and how to read it on the pedigrees. But this is what the game is about. It's, it's learning the different, uh, the, how the different families of dogs is bred. And uh, learning, uh, it's, 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 co it's a constant match. It's constant uh, con and uh, trying to prove the truth regardless of who you're matched into. And you're actually, you're matched within everybody that you have any dealings with within the game dog game. That's the character of the individualist and the individuality nature of game dogs and the people that have interest in game dogs. We're not exactly the kind of people who uh, are the same character of people who have interest in racing horses or flying pigeons or game cocks or uh, uh, racing dogs or whatever uh, that man plays with animals. Man, uh, you know, has a lifestyle around animals. And we are of a much higher level of individuality, individualism. And uh, as you as you learn and understand breeding, you're, you'll be able to understand this. And uh, to be able to learn and understand the way the different families of game dogs has been bred here in America learn the way they've been proven, really study and understand the understanding of the game, and relate that over to being able to understand the way yourself has been bred. It, it, it's like a, this is a very strong part of life to be able to understand the way an individual has been bred throughout their heritage, how your genetics